going to give you the, the, the answer that no one knows. How do you escape from the National Enquirer uh, with your life? Since no one ever leaves the National Enquirer, there's nowhere to go but down. Literally down. So it's you either die or you go down. Secret Brotherhood? Jail. Yes, the Secret Brotherhood of the uh, vile and vicious National Enquirer. Um, anyway, so my, my demise came with the National Enquirer was when the Globe, which is their sister paper, ran a story on Clint Eastwood that the Aryan Nation had a hundred thousand dollar bounty on Clint Eastwood's head for reneging to on a speaking engagement for the Aryan Nation. Well, people, the nuts in California are taking pot shots at Clint Eastwood. Clint Eastwood is getting ready to be killed. You know, he was the mayor of Carmel by the Sea, besides mm -hmm. a big producer and actor, right? Right. So he goes to a Los Angeles judge, Clint Eastwood, and says, "Hey, this." Abloid is going to get me killed. You got to stop it. I was never supposed to speak to the Aryan Nation. And these people have had people taking pot shots at me for $100,000. So the judge goes to, to the tabloid and insists that they open up their sources on that story. Well, the guy that wrote it started to cry. Mah, 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 mah. I'm forced to make that story up. There are no sources. He says, uh, irresponsible journalism. journalism and he says okay now still he doesn't the judge doesn't believe you know he's not gonna let the, this crying reporter pass the buck he's responsible his name's on that story right. so the judge now goes to the Los Angeles Times and says uh, has them run a story for any in search of any tabloid reporter staff reporter not a stringer any reporter on staff presently that will corroborate crying baby story that they're forced to make up pieces, they'll grant you immunity. We'll grant you immunity. I'm thinking, who the hell wants immunity these days? We want cash. Right. Well, back to remember they couldn't blackmail me. Now I'm the real loose cannon. I'm the real thorn in their side. So, because they don't give me my, they're not giving me my money. They promised, remember earlier I told you, you promised to make me a millionaire mm -hmm. after the Pete Rose prison break. That wasn't happening. I'm still in the studio apartment while everybody else was driving their Jags, playing on their own private tennis courts and jacuzzi in with prostitutes in their tub. Yeah. I wasn't having none of that. No prostitutes for you. Well, I mean, I'm not opposed to a male prostitute. I like to look. <laughs> anyway, so I pick up the phone and I call the National Choir from my little studio apartment, my bedroom and my bathroom and my kitchen all in the same room sitting in my bed. I pick up the phone and I call Lantana, the corporate office, and I said, I want my money. I want my money, and I want it now, because as I've calculated, I ain't nowhere near being that millionaire that you promised me. And frankly, I'm tired of seeing everyone else living the high life, the high life and I'm doing all the stunts, the bee beard stunt, and the uh, going to uh, Watts neighborhood during the Rodney King rights because we think Whitney Houston's in there scoring crack. Yeah, this is the shit they were having me do. Now, hello, it's not paranoia if it's really happening. This is that time when I adopted that saying, you know, I started first. Yeah, be so that's here. that on your site. Yeah, you know, so uh, I was totally clear in my head that I was not paranoid. That these people were out to kill me with the knife thrower. Only four of them left in the world. They want to throw knives at me. Who's going to admit that they're going blind? You know, as we get older, we lose our hearing a little bit. We lose our eyesight, right? See, as you're rubbing your eyes. And uh, who's going to admit that and lose their careers, right? I think there's going to have to be a little accident between the eyes before, you know, the guy retires. Why would he take away his living? You would have been the last one he did. Well, that's what I'm figuring. Anyway. Go, once you go during the Rodney King riots where they're burning down Watts and look for Whitney scoring crack. Ugh, now something's the matter with that picture. I think her crack can wait. I'll catch you on another She'll day. She'll be scoring some tomorrow, too. <laughs> so anyway, so I pick up the phone, National Choir. I, say, I want my money, and I want it now. Just happened I, that year, I was 54% of their page one stories. And they said, oh, you're tired. You're tired. You are. No, and I tell them, wait, was, let me wrap my head around this. So, uh, I want my money or I want it now. Or I'm going to go to the judge 
and I'm going to tell them where the bodies are buried. I want my money. Now, I'm, not, I'm done with playing with them. These people are trying to kill me. I'm convinced of it. I'm done. I want my money, and I want it now. No more bullshit from you people. No more con jobs. I'm tired of pulling your dirty, rotten crap on other people. You know, it wasn't what I was. I bought into it for. That's not while I was there. No, you're there for I the money that well, you didn't get. Yeah, but I, I didn't know what they were all about. I thought this multi-billion dollar company was going to guide me in a safe, legal direction. That's not what it was about. For better journalism. Yeah, right. That's not what it was about. And, uh, you know, it was about the blackmail. And it was about, you know, it was, just, it was just way over the top. So they said, oh, you know what, Sammy, you're really tired. We have overworked you. You know what? We'd like to send you on a world cruise. Anywhere, I mean, just, we'll, any, or anywhere you want to go. You're, you're exhausted. And they said, oh, well, two-week cruise. And I went, oh, you. Son of a biatches. That two-week number, had they said a month or had they said six weeks, but they hit that two-week number exactly when there was the deadline for the person to come forth and corroborate the crime reporter's story from the Globe. Had they, you know what I mean? Had they, had they extended that time frame, but because they slipped and did an exact to that date, and I went, you son of a... We're going to send you away so you can't say nothing. Until, Where do you want to go? And then, Yeah, exactly. And I went, you son of a... And I did call him, you son of a bitch. Yeah, spade And they, spade. they said, well, you know what? Come, we're going to fly. We want you to go to the LAX. We're going to fly you to Lantana, and we're going to give you your money. And I think, all right, well, that's a little bit easier. I should have said that about a year ago. So I got packed up a couple of nights, changing the clothes, got off. They picked me up in Lantana or wherever I flew into. They took me out through a party, as they always do. The Brits like to drink heavy. You know, and, and don't forget, it's a male organization. And you're a good reason to party. I'm a good reason to party. And I like a good party. So we're having a good time, great food, a lot of drinks. And uh, so, you know what? I've never divulged this editor's name. And uh, so he, he puts his arm around me. I'm waiting for the right time to divulge this the threat where the threat comes in. He puts his arm around me and he kind of hugging on me and I had got my cocktail in this hand and he's got his cocktail in the other hand and we've been having a great time. No talk about the money, no talk about the negative, no talk about the Clint Eastwood piece. And he says, you know what? He says, if you open your mouth about this industry, I'm gonna have you killed. He's leaning into my ear. And I thought, you really have to, and I went, <laughs> you people are funny. You kill me. You know, just finished partying and we had that a great time. Ones. I just laughed and laughed. I said, that is the funniest thing I ever heard. It's almost as funny as a rubber chicken story. Mm -hmm. And uh, so I get back on the plane and I'm flying back to Los Angeles and I sober up and I went, oh, they meant it. You know, started with the other characters who they play with out there and who's in prison and, you know, the crap that they're pulling. And I realized, oh, my God, these people are going to kill me. I couldn't wait to get on that ground in Los Angeles and call them on the phone. As soon as I landed, I was able to get on the phone. And I called call him. I said, you better follow me around, all right, and you better hope I don't accidentally kill myself. I said, because the day that I do... That 24-hour period that I don't call my attorney, he's to release the tapes that's already in a vault with all the dirty, rotten, conniving, backstabbing, con jobs where the bodies are buried. It's all there. It's already recorded. It's sitting in a vault. You better hope I don't kill myself accidentally, of course. And I said, because in the 24-hour period, if he doesn't hear from me, He's to release those tapes to the media. And I, I could he see their wheels turning. And I said, and, you, and don't be thinking you can hire somebody to mimic my voice because it comes with a password. Back pedal, back pedal, back pedal, back pedal. Yeah. I didn't have none of that stuff. Did I mean, they send any was... money? Well. Did this ever get up to you getting any money out of them? Or they jack you around some more? Oh, of course jack me around some more. 
That's all right, because I had to leave in the middle of the night. I mean, now it's gotten really serious. I've got a death. You still owe you money? I've got a, Oh yeah, I've got a death threat now. So listen to this. So I hire an eighteen wheeler in the middle of the night, a truck driver, an eighteen wheeler, an empty trailer to pull up. Now listen to this. Everybody's driving their little Jaguars. I'm in a friggin' Ford Escort, and I broke into prison and got the picture uh, of. Uh, Pete best a uh, Pete Rose, the best of year, Sports Illustrated. I'm 54% of the page one, wearing the B beards and stuff. These people never leave their friggin' swank digs. And I'm friggin' driving a Ford Escort. That's who I was playing with. That's why I finally came down and said, You are gonna, I want my money because y'all, you're, you're gonna get me killed. I mean, that was the plan because they didn't want what's locked in here. They exposed me to all of the secrets of the tabloid industry. It is nothing like what people think. If Brit little Britney Spears people knew what I know, they would stop these people in their tracks. All celebrities gotta do is pick up the phone. Their PR people or their managers pick up the phone and call me and I'll tell you how to stop them in their tracks. There is one thing that they fear the most and I have that. The Achilles heel. I have that, and no one, it has not dawned on anyone how to stop. Now, you know, a lot of celebrities will call them, like Madonna or Janet Jackson, or, you know, they have, or even Michael J. Fox. They've had stories. You know, people call them and tip, you know, tip off, oh, Madonna's going to be at the Ivy in Hollywood with her new boyfriend. Well, that's her people calling mm -hmm. to come out there and do that. They said it's a million dollars worth of publicity to get in the National Enquirer. Uh, so the really smart players know how to play it. Michael J. Fox, you know, they'll sit around on the page one stories on Mondays and they said, all right, let's make somebody famous. Who do we want to make famous out there? And, you know, that, that, that'll play the game with us. Who is it? So they both, well, one time, and this was a long time ago, it came up that Michael J. Fox would be probably be a good one for middle, middle America is, mm -hmm. is their audience. So Michael J. Fox did not understand the game. You're spo we're supposed to write about you. You ignore it. You get the million dollars worth of publicity every time we mention your name. And that sells, that perpetuates your money and your deals. We make you bigger than what you really are. Right. So they did that for Vanna White was, well, I mean, just, you know, just name them all. Save her career. Save her career. So Michael J. Fox, a couple of months into it, started to complain. Oh, no, you can't write that. That's not true. And he kept doing that. He kept doing that. And so the National Choir, I remember I was in the meeting, and they said, you know, he's a pain in the ass. He doesn't freaking understand the game. He's out of there. He's a thorn in our side. He's out of there. We'll find somebody else. Well, a month after he, they quit running him, he was calling back on the phone. I'm sorry, what did I do? And, oh, it is friggin' too late for you, bud. They blackballed him. That was it, you know. So when they do let you in, oh, I got a lot of stories. I got all of it. Let's stop here. Yeah, it does.